Hello everyone, this is Rabia's blog, and I'm starting a new series called Random Reviews, and basically here I review anything that is not movie related, such as random books I have read, comics, TV shows, and just about anything else. So in this review, I am reviewing Joss Whedon's run on Astonishing X-Men, and I'm going to review each volume separately, so that way I can get all my opinions in, on one volume at the time without son sounding so confusing about the whole series. Today's review is the first book in Josh Whedon's run of Astonishing X-Men, and it is called Gifted. Before I get into what I liked or hated about this volume, I would like to give a brief summary on this volume. After years of leaving the Xavier Institute, X-Men member Kitty Pride finally comes back to the Institute and resumes her role with the X-Men. Currently, the school is being run by Cyclops and Emma Frost, the former villainess that Kitty still can't stand, and they ask Kitty to come back and work with the X-Men which now consists of Wolverine, Cyclops, Beast, Emma Frost, and Kitty herself. One day, the X-Men heard about a new mutant cure created by Dr. Rao, and they went to investigate it. But soon, the X-Men discover that there is an evil plot involved with the mutant cure that involves an encounter with an alien named Orn, who becomes the X-Men's biggest foe. Josh Wien's name is very well known to anyone who has seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, and Firefly. And when I heard that Josh Whedon was writing a Starry Sheet X-Men, I just had to check the series out. First of all, I was totally blown away by this volume, as the story was very creative and exciting, and was an inspiration for the third X-Men movie, X-Men The Last Stand. I just loved the way that the characters were so well done here, especially with Kitty's character, as she is shown to be a feisty yet easygoing, and she is such a likable character in this volume. I also loved the portrayals of Scott and Emma, and it was interesting seeing them in a relationship in this volume. And it was also great seeing Emma being calculated and manipulative in this volume since she is a former villain, so it would definitely make sense for her to behave this way. The Mutant Cure storyline was an interesting concept because I have never, I have seen storylines of X-Men when mutants were being persecuted, but I never would have thought that there would be a storyline that involves curing mutants of their powers. It raises really interesting questions about how some people are willing to change themselves just to be part of a society, and the scenes with Beast contemplating about taking the cure of the curious beastly body We've done very well. The only thing that irked me a bit about this volume is the villain, the alien Orr. Even though he has a menacing attitude and easily took down the X-Men the first time around, there's not much known about him, but I, I guess we'll know more about him in the later issues of the series. Also, Orr doesn't really have the same commanding and threatening tone that Magneto brought to the X-Men universe, since his motives are still unclear at this point. But the fight scenes with him are interesting to look at. John Cassidy's illustrations are brilliant and gorgeous to look at, and I love the details he puts on each X-Men character, and especially the illustration of Emma Frost having blue lipstick. The fight scenes between the X-Men and Orr were brilliantly illustrated, and he looks so dramatic that I was basically on the edge of my seat trying to see where this fight would lead to. At this point in my review, I usually state out the ratings that the comics receive, such as whether they are rated teen, which stands for teen, which means that the comic is appropriate for teens and might have content that is inappropriate for small children. So the rating for Astonishing X-Men Gifted is T+, which means it's aimed at older teens, since there is some blood and language in this volume, but it's not like over-the-top gory scenes, and the language is minimal at best. Overall, I give Astonishing X-Men a 5 out of 5. Brilliant character development with all the X-Men characters, and a very interesting and creative plot that would definitely stand the test of time over all the other X-Men stories. Alright, sometimes at the point of the review, I will reveal some spoilers just to get my views on a particular scene in the comic. So if you haven't read this comic yet, and you don't want to be spoiled, feel free to skip this section. Or if you have read this comic before, you just want to hear what I have to say about this particular scene, then keep watching. So, anyone who has read this comic probably knows that there is a very popular X-Men character that gets brought back to life, and that's Colossus. Yep! In a very memorable one-page spread, Colossus returns from the dead, shocking his former lover Kitty Pride by literally running through her. Now, you probably remember that Colossus had actually died during the Legacy Virus arc, when he injected himself with the virus, killing himself so that all of mutankind would be able to survive the virus breakout, making this Colossus' his most heroic act and sacrificing his life to save the lives of millions of mutants. Now, don't get me wrong. Why I'm glad that Colossus is back because I can't really read an X-Men comic book without Colossus being in it? It is one of those reasons why I don't like characters from comic books being revived so often, because every time a character is brought back to life, there is no clean-cut reason why the character is brought back to life in the first place. I mean, we know that Colossus was brought back to life by aliens. Okay, 
I can deal with that because at least they explain now who brought Colossus back to life, but it sort of had a negative effect on the vi Legacy Virus arc. So in the Legacy Virus arc, a mutant has to kill him or herself in order for the rest of the mute race to survive the virus breakout, and Colossus was the right candidate for that. But now are they saying that Colossus didn't have to kill himself to save mutant because they could just bring him back to life like nothing happened? I don't know about the logic of the Legacy Virus. But the way they made it sound like when the arc was first published was that the mutant has to die permanently for the cure to work. Although this is just a little hunch and I'm not really sure if that's what the plot was implying. And it's not just this particular X-Men comic that does the whole character is dead but then is brought back to life scenario. But almost every single superhero comic has this scenario. And the problem with this scenario is that if the character dies a heroic death but is suddenly brought back to life, then a death might seem like nothing since, yeah, they saved the world by temporarily sacrificing their lives, but hey, they're going to be brought back to life anyway because the comic industry needs a way to make money off of these characters, so death is the way to go. Don't get me wrong, Josh Whedon is a brilliant writer, and I loved how he referenced to the Legacy Virus arc since not many of the X-Men stories nowadays actually refer back to the older comics. And Josh Whedon did a great job at trying to reference the older X-Men comics in his work because it gives us X-Men fans a sense of nostalgia in a new way. But I sort of wish that more was explained about how the legacy virus worked and if a mutant had to die permanently for the effects to fully work. Because it would have made more sense to me if they explained the effects of the legacy virus on Colossus. So that way his re resurrection wouldn't seem like a desperate attempt to get more money off the franchise. Well, that's my review on Astonishing X-Men Gifted. And be sure to check out my next review on the second volume of the Astonishing X-Men series called Dangerous. See you later!